Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. It is time again for another Metal Earth kit. This time it's the Enterprise D. I've already done the Enterprise from the original series. I've done several Star Wars kits. Now I'm on to the Star Trek. This will be the second Star Trek ship that I've done. So let's crack it open and see what we have. Imagine this is much like before. Two metal sheets and instructions. You have your usual workflow. And you have at the beginning talking about folding and tabs. Pliers are helpful for assembly. A little bit more about twisting the tabs. Your symbols telling you which one to twist and fold. The blue circle is fold and the Green triangle is twist. You have the layout of your two different sheets here so you can find the appropriate parts. This would be this sheet, and they're all numbered and laid out. And then you have your flow chart for putting it together, which varies from ship to ship. A lot of times you put one part together here, another part over here, and they come together. It just depends on the design of the ship. And this one is only one page. So you would think it's not that complicated. Let's see how it goes. Tools you will need for this kit. Tweezers. I did almost the entire thing with nothing but tweezers. Towards the end, I ran into a couple of problems. And it was good to have a dentist pick. Although if you're careful, you will not need this. In a couple of instances, it was good to have a pocket knife to get in and bend the tabs over, although you might not be able to get by without it. And once or twice, maybe a pair of pliers to help bend and shape some parts together. One of the first pieces to assemble is the saucer section upper phaser bank. It is a long bend piece that is easy to bend and break. I suggest using tweezers to free it, twist it and free it from the sheet without breaking it. With this model, there are a lot of large, almost subtle curves that have to be shaped by hand. The tools that I usually use to shape the curves really weren't suited for this kit. The way the tabs were designed on this kit did a pretty good job of pulling different parts together. Putting together the pieces of the neck between the main and secondary hull was almost like solving a puzzle. The pieces fit together rather oddly, but in the end I worked it out. In many cases, I use my fingernails to bend over the tabs. It took just over two hours to complete this kit. I edited out a lot of the video and tried to focus on things that might be helpful to someone looking to build this kit. This kit was fairly easy compared to many of the other kits that I have done. There were not a lot of tricky parts to focus on.
As with all the kits, it takes time and small adjustments to get all the tabs to fit and line up. This video may make it look easy and make it look like this kit came together quickly, but I spent a lot of time trying to fit parts together, then adjusting, then bending some more, then trying again, and then bending some more, until the pieces fit. I also spent time carefully looking over the directions and making sure I was putting the parts together the right way. Do not rush through. It is easy to make mistakes and ruin the build. It is not easy to bend and pull tabs and parts back apart again. Too much bending and the pieces will break. And there you go, the Enterprise D. This was probably one of the more fun kits. It was challenging, but in a different way. I almost got through this entire kit without the need for any tools other than tweezers. Right at the end, I discovered that under the nacelles, when you put them together, there's little tabs you have to push out. It's good to do that before you finish completing them. I thought I did, but apparently I didn't. So it's a very good thing I had one of these little dentistry style tools to go in there and pull them out because there's really not much room to work with. And then at the very, very end, I used the pocket knife. I really need to get a smaller one to bend over the tabs on the nacelles. But beyond that, I didn't have to use any other special tools. Now, the number one complaint, and this is a complaint that I think a lot of people are gonna have when they go to put this kit together if they don't notice it. If they don't notice it on the back picture, they're gonna notice it when they put it together, is these little guns. There's little guns on either side of the saucer section. Now the problem with that is, that was on the future Enterprise. It was only in one episode, I believe, one or two. The very end of the next generation. It was a ship that also had other add-ons add to it, like a third nacelle and some other little things here and there. But the one that was in the rest of the series, the one that you saw every episode, the normal one, did not have those guns. That is my biggest complaint. Those should not be there. And honestly, it's very tempting to cut those off. Beyond that, it's a nice little kit. Comes together fairly nicely. This one, you have to work a lot with your hands to make the curves, but the way it's built, the tabs ultimately pull a lot of it together. So it's not too terribly difficult. At least it wasn't for me. And this is coming from somebody who's done quite a few of these kits, at least space-wise. Star Wars and Star Trek. I really like the way they did the saucer section coming together. Instead of having a little piece in between to join them, they have two little tabs on each side. They have a tab and a little section for the tab to go through. Those hook, but then the rest of these tabs just fold over from the edge. So that brings it together very nice and neat. I like how they did that with, with a lot of these pieces. They really did a good job bringing all these odd shapes together into the Enterprise D. And the sails were easy. You don't have to do a nice round curve like you do with the original series Enterprise. This just kind of push and fold and it, it comes together fairly nicely. Having said that, getting the top half and the bottom half together was probably one of the most challenging things. The, mo the most difficult things about this are, are getting these two nacelles, the top and bottom part together because there's so little room to work with, you have to kind of bend the tabs, not straight down, but at an angle. And the side of, of the bottom piece, you don't bend them all the way up, you bend one out. So you kind of set the top piece down, set the top piece down and, and slide the tabs into the other while pushing the other side up. It took me a little bit to get it. And then assembling this bottom section, the two halves, and that's often a challenge. It takes a lot of patience to assemble the different halves once you've got all the little pieces on. So it wasn't too bad. I enjoyed this kit. I really, really hate that it has those guns on there. This is the first kit that I've done in some time that didn't have any major screw-ups. 
I didn't have to go buy a second one. I didn't make such a big mistake that I couldn't finish it. Maybe that points to me getting better. Maybe that points to this just not being as difficult to model. I had a couple of close little calls, like within the sales, but I managed to pull it all together and make it work. So as usual, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.